Along these roads in northern Sweden is an answer that can save lives. Physician Peter Andersen has driven these roads many times to collect blood samples in the fight against a disease considered to be incurable, the neurodegenerative disease ALS. The onset of ALS can begin unassumingly, with a weakening in one hand, one leg, or in the tongue. The disease kills the nerve cells that control the muscles. The body becomes increasingly paralyzed, leading eventually to death. To find its cause, research scientists are now looking deep inside our cells with the hope of being able to find a gene therapy that will be able to stop this deadly illness. No one has done this before. We are really in a more or less a Neil Armstrong-like scenario. We're going to the moon up there. You don't know when you land with the eagle and you take the first step. What will happen? I don't understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. Somebody got to do it, because ALS is a very cruel disease. Today, research on our genes is advancing rapidly. But 30 years ago, when Peter Andersen came here to Umeå as a young physician from Copenhagen, not much was known about the causes behind ALS. I still remember the time back in 1992, 93, we had no treatment. Nothing worked. Absolutely nothing worked. The big breakthrough for ALS research came in the 1990s, when researchers in the United States managed to locate a hereditary mutated gene in a variant of the disease. We have thousands of different genes in our cells, the genes are like a recipe for the formation of the body's proteins. And the proteins ensure that the body functions properly. But if a gene goes wrong and mutates, the protein also goes wrong, and this can lead to disease. Now, the ALS researchers in the US had located one such mutated gene, a gene called SOD1. This was sensational news, and for the researchers in Umeå, it was even more exciting. Because here, through previous research on other diseases, there was already a great deal of knowledge about SOD1, and they were able to kickstart their search for the mutated ALS gene in their patients. And they got a hit directly. What we did was quite simply that we started collecting samples from our ALS patients, and the very first ALS patient we asked donate a blood sample on Tuesday morning. And within a week, we have found the first European SOT1 mutation. And the finding became even more spectacular when they realized they had found their own variant of the gene mutation. Now, in order to map the gene, they needed to get blood samples from all of their patients' families. And it was this gene hunt that took Peter out onto the northern roads of Sweden. So what I did was that I literally traveled around in northern Sweden, making home visits to many relatives of this particular patient, more than 40 individuals, collecting blood samples. This became the first of many families with hereditary ALS that Peter mapped. In one of the families, it was possible to trace an ALS case all the way back to the 19th century. This is, I believe, the oldest known picture of a patient with ALS. I said the picture was taken in June 1887. The older man in this picture has ALS. He holds his weakened arms around the two children. The following year, he died of his muscular weakness. And the disease runs in the family to this day. The samples from this and other ALS families have been collected here in these freezers by Peter's research team. They have built one of the world's foremost ALS biobanks 
which has played a major role in researchers around the world locating many new ALS genes. The knowledge about the genetics of ALS has completely changed this picture. Now that we know that there are more than 40 different genes that, when mutated, can cause ALS, it really shows that ALS is a huge, big puzzle with many different shapes. After the lengthy process of mapping, it is finally time now for the next step, to find a cure for the disease. In Umeå, several studies are underway for new treatments directly targeting the SOD1 gene, referred to as gene therapy. What is promising is gene therapy, where you directly target the expression of a SOD1 protein, then you can most likely prolong the disease uh, or even get disease arrest, that means stop for any further uh, worsening of a condition of a patient. Vet du vad det kommer vara intressant att göra på det här? Det ja, och det har jag faktiskt här några, okay. eh, några bilder på. The new gene therapy thus stops any new formation of the faulty proteins inside the cells and halts the deadly course of this disease in the patients. But there is a problem. The nerve cells that are already dead cannot heal again. The progression of the disease is prevented but cannot be reversed. To completely defeat ALS, the treatment must begin even before the patient has any symptoms. This is why Peter is already planning for the next project, which takes him back to the ALS families in the north. A new study is now being planned, which we consider to be the ultimate ALS clinical trial, and that is to give gene therapy to individuals who are carriers of SOT1 mutations, which we know sooner or later will result in that they will get ALS. But now Peter is hoping for a change as the gene carriers get preventative treatments. I hope that they will never become my patients. They are test subjects. And so I don't, will not have to give them an ALS diagnosis. And for Peter, it only feels fair that the families who once laid the foundation for his research can now also share in the results. That this can be the beginning of the end for the deadly disease that has plagued their families for so long.